Hi, in this video, I will talk about Ethiopia's response to COVID-19, the constitutional issues that have arisen due to the response, and some insights for constitutional law in times of global crisis, such as a pandemic. Ethiopia confirmed the first case of COVID-19 on March 13. As of today, 24th of May, Ethiopia has 701 confirmed cases, 167 recoveries, and six deaths related to COVID-19. To understand the legal measures Ethiopia is taking to contain the spread of COVID-19, it's important to note that Ethiopia is a federal parliamentary republic. Ethiopia's legal response to COVID-19 somehow reflects the federal character of the country. Regional states were the first to take legal measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. On the 26th of March, Tigray region declared a state of emergency uh, for 15 days and later extended it to three months. Under this emergency, social gatherings, sports events, travel within and into the region are limited. Tigray also imposed a mandatory 14-day quarantine for everyone who comes to the region. Although other regional status did not declare a state of emergency, they imposed various lockdown and social distancing measures in their major cities. On the 8th of April, the federal government declared a nationwide state of emergency for five months to counter and control the spread of COVID-19 and to mitigate its impact. The federal constitution authorizes the declaration of a state of emergency where an epidemic occurs. The constitution also states that the measures taken should be to the extent necessary to avert the conditions that required the declaration of a state of emergency. This means that the government has to identify the emergency measures necessary to contain the pandemic. However, the emergency proclamation does not contain any specific measures. It simply authorizes the government to take any measures through regulation as it deems necessary. Except for a few articles, the government can take any measure that can suspend the application of the Constitution. Basically, the emergency proclamation authorizes the government to rule by decree. The regulations the government adopted contain 26 broad items of prohibited activities uh, ranging from social distancing rules, regulation of essential services, the provision of handshaking, labor relations, rent contractors, closure of nightclubs and bars, and provision of disseminating information that may cause psychological stress to the public. The regulation also imposed 18 broad items of obligations, including a mandatory 14-day quarantine for those who come from abroad, and the obligation to stay in specially government-arranged places once contracted COVID-19. There have been complaints about the abuse of these emergency powers by the police, uh, especially in churches, uh, marketplaces, market places, uh, and in the streets. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission expresses its concern on the abuse of these emergency powers uh, by the security forces and calls for more restrained uh, emergency power. COVID-19 and the declaration of the state of emergency led to the postponement of the sixth national election, uh, which was scheduled for the 29th of August, 2020. This has brought two main constitutional issues. One related to the kind of government Ethiopia will have between the end of term of parliament and the next election, and the second related to the conduct of elections at the regional level. Article 54.1 and 58.3 of the Federal Constitution stated that the, the term of parliament is for five years and new elections should be conducted one month before the expiry of the term. Due to the pandemic, new elections could not be uh, conducted and the parliament already postponed the election for an unknown date. This creates a constitutional issue about the kind of government Ethiopia will have between the end of term of parliament and the next election. 
In anticipation of this constitutional issue, the government commissioned uh, three separate studies uh, to find a legal solution. And the, expert, uh, and the experts came up with uh, four options. The first option is dissolving parliament. The second is declaring a state of emergency. The third is amending the constitution. And the fourth one is seeking constitutional interpretation. The government took these four proposals to parliament and the parliament chose the constitutional interpretation option and referred the matter to the Council of Constitutional Inquiry that advises the House of Federation in its task of constitutional interpretation. Unlike other federal status, Ethiopia confers the power of constitutional review to the upper house of parliament, uh, which is a representative of ethnic groups. In its referral, the parliament asked the Council of Constitutional Inquiry two questions. The first question is, what will happen to the term of parliament and the government due to the pandemic and the declaration of the state of emergency? And the second question is, with what time frame the new election should be conducted after the end of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic? The Ethiopian constitution does not expressly confer the House of Federation uh, the power of abstract review, nor does it authorize the parliament to seek constitutional interpretation in the abstract. The constitution expressly confers the House of Federation the power of concrete review. The Council of Constitutional Inquiry issued a press statement uh, calling lawyers to submit uh, their opinions related to the parliament's two questions including its jurisdiction uh, to see the matter. The Council of Constitutional Inquiry held two days of public hearing uh, broadcasted live on TV. Uh, before the hearings, however, the Council already decided that it has jurisdiction. While there has been uh, strong views uh, for and against the government's constitutional interpretation option, none of the submissions that are against constitutional interpretation uh, were held. This created a little bit controversy on the impartiality of the Council. The impartiality of the Council was also further questioned when two of its members discussed live on TV about the issue under consideration. The part of this Council is to make recommendations to the House of Federation. Currently, like the Parliament, the House of Federation is composed of one party and the legitimacy of this house is also uh, questionable. Uh, yet, uh, we are expecting uh, to hear a decision uh, on this matter. While the government is pursuing this legal process, opposition political parties are suggesting a variety of options ranging from establishing a transitional government, a national unity government, to a technocratic government between the end of term of parliament in September 2020, and the next election. The second constitutional issue that arises or will arise from the COVID-19 pandemic and the declaration of the state of emergency is a federalism issue related to conducting elections at the regional level. Although the federal government postponed the national election, the ruling party of Tigray regional state wants to conduct an election at a regional level. Asked about this issue, the chairperson of the National Election Board stated that this will be unconstitutional. Similarly, the, the ruling party of the federal government also states that it will take some measures uh, if Tigray conducts the election. The argument of the National Election Board and the federal government uh, centers on Article 102 of the federal constitution uh, which gives the National Election Board <coughs> the power to conduct federal and regional elections. The ruling party in Tigray plans to conduct the election uh, based on Article 39 of the federal constitution. Article 39 is a non-derogable provision uh, which entitles ethnic groups an unconditional right to self-determination, including secession. The ruling party in Tigray considers the right to hold a regional election 
as an aspect of the right to self-determination. Most importantly, the Ethiopian constitution is a constitution for ethnic groups in which Article 39 is its fundamental manifestation. Both the federal government and the regional government uh, have a constitutional basis uh, to support their position, and maybe uh, this may need some sort of constitutional interpretation at some point. But it may also bring conflict between the two governments if they try to settle uh, such dispute uh, outside of legal and political uh, mechanisms. Finally, uh, from the Ethiopian legal response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the constitutional issues that have arisen, uh, we may learn the following about constitutional law in terms of uh, global crisis uh, such as the pandemic. Uh, first, uh, as COVID-19 exposed uh, the health systems of many nations, it also exposed the functionality of the Ethiopian constitution under such circumstances. A state's need will design constitutions even more in times of global crisis uh, such as COVID-19. The constitutional crisis that have arisen related to term of parliament and regional elections have to do with uh, constitutional design. Exercising the right to self-determination, including the session, during a global crisis such as COVID-19 weakens the capacity of status to contain the pandemic. Uh, second, having a well-designed constitution is not enough. We need to have independent constitutional institutions that arbiter difficult legal and political questions that may arise under these circumstances. Especially, we need an independent judicial review system. Much of the controversy related to the ongoing constitutional uh, interpretation issue in Ethiopia has to do with the political nature of the constitutional review body. An, ind an independent constitutional review body would have given insurance to all, sides of, to all sides of the political spectrum and the problem would have been half solved. Uh, third, while it's expected that the power of the executive uh, looms large in crises such as COVID-19, we need other constitutional institutions uh, to play their role. We need parliament to oversight the executive's implementation of emergency powers. We need the federal system to work and other institutions such as uh, Human Rights Commission and the Ombudsperson to do their job. Generally, constitutional law has a, uh, has a huge role to play both to contain the pandemic by providing uh, necessary normative and institutional frameworks for such purposes and to prevent the executive's uh, authoritarian tendencies.